But what I want to bring your attention to is, is tethered spinal cord syndrome can occur in a congenital sense. So in the setting of a myelomeningocele, a lipomyelomeningocele, a spinal cord lipoma, a fatty phylum terminale, or a split cord. They can also occur because of a spinal cord injury. So in the setting of trauma, they can also occur in, in the setting of a tumor, metastatic tumor or primary tumor. They can also uh, occur in the setting of an infection, bacterial meningitis, tuberculosis, fungal meningitis. They can also occur in the setting of ionizing radiation or postoperative adhesions. So there's lots of causes for tethered spinal cord syndrome. So just, some, just because you've diagnosed someone as having a tethered cord doesn't mean they have a congenital problem and vice versa. Okay. So clues to diagnosis. So you can see cutaneous features that, that really appear in the midline. And this can include in the setting of a lipomyelomeningocele, a subcutaneous lipoma. A sacral dimple is typically a sign that there's some kind of abnormality underneath that needs to be investigated. Hypertrichosis or a hairy patch in the area. Skin tags or a cutaneous hemangioma. This is an example of a, of a young girl who has what appears to be a cigarette type burn in her uh, lumbosacral area. Um, but this actually, upon further evaluation, was actually a what's called a meningocele manque or an atretic meningocele um, that it involuted, uh, but there was an abnormal connection and she actually presented with signs and symptoms of tethered spinal cord. So when you talk about the neurological symptoms associated with tethered spinal cord, there can be a, a wide variation in, symptom, in symptoms. So you need to keep a high index of suspicion. Um, symptoms of tethering include lower extremity weakness, uh, radicular pain, sensory deficits, hyporeflexia, which can appear to be asymmetric, spasticity, bowel bladder function, and non-radicular pain. Um, other signs include scoliosis, uh, as I mentioned previously. Um, upper no motor neuron signs typically come from ischemic cord damage from tethering, so they're typically mediated a little bit upstream, versus lower motor neuron signs can actually be from local compression or, or, or nerve injury. So anomalies uh, in the bone can, can include bifid vertebrae, uh, laminar defects, hemivertebrae, sacral aplasia, and sacral agenesis, and oftentimes these are associated with tethered spinal cord. And we can also see them in the combination of foot deformities. I get a lot of consultations from my pediatric orthopedic surgery colleagues um, because kim, kids come in with uh, limb length discrepancies, lower extremity atrophy, toe walking, limb pain, and scoliosis. And oftentimes it's a harbinger of, of a, an occult spinal uh, dysraphism. Anorectal anomalies um, can also be associated with uh, uh, closed neural tube defects and associated anorectal and urogenital disorders can happen in 10 to 15% of all patients with anorectal anomalies. Um, and this can include cloacal uh, extrophy uh, and imperforate anus, um, bladder, bladder extrophy and uh, Vader syndrome, which you all know what that is. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.